memorize this one scripture, but I mean scripture, just one saying. But I remember a history teacher telling me to have no concept of the past is to understand little of the present. No, to, to know nothing of the past is to have, <laughs> well, now that I'm trying to remember it, I can't remember. Two, know nothing of the past is to understand little of the present and to have no concept of the future. In other words, if you don't have any knowledge of your past, if you're trying to forget your past, if you're trying to forget everything that's happened before, then you really don't understand what your past was for. You don't understand why you went through what you went through, or why you have been brought to this moment in time, and you really don't completely understand where you're going to go in the future. So, in the things that were, the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter, we're told in scriptures to really have a complete picture of who we are, so that we know what we are, and we know where we're going. That's what God wanted for us from the beginning, because for Him, it has already been accomplished. It has all been done. So, don't shy away from your own past, or mistakes, or even successes, or failures. But rather, accept them for what they are. Something you did, and that's your testimony. And then, accept it today as God shows you and reminds you of a way to look at it in a different point of view maybe seeing it from where he saw it and then that will give you a better appreciation of where you're going in the future and how you're going to get there when you wonder if life has any purpose why was i born what is the purpose of my existence and why am i worth to god what am i worth to god have you ever asked yourself these questions? I have. In fact, I was considering all this just the other day as I sat in my big old chair where I often pray, worshiping our Father by rehearsing aloud all that He has done and all He has done. As I did, my mind went to the amazing truths of Ephesians 1. I thought of the magnificence and power of our Father in creating the world and informing man from the dust of the earth. Then I thought of Ephesians 1.4. He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. You know, in thinking about that, have you ever done that, what she just said? This is a K. Arthur book, by the way, and it causes us to formulate our devotion towards a specific goal in mind. But have you ever taken the time to stop and look back at what God has done? Have you ever kind of like rehearsed in your mind your entire life and seen how His hand really did work in your life in some way to bring you to your present day. If you haven't, then maybe you should. Now, if you've been a Christian for a while, then this is something that I like to tell everyone to do. Remind yourself where you came from. Look at some of the things that you have done in the past, whether it be the moment you got saved in your testimony that you forgot to share lately. You haven't really told anyone about it. Maybe you should sit down and write it and share it. I know we have a, a segment that we do on Last Generation Network News that we like to share testimonies and have people write their, their testimony and pass it out and distribute it to the world at large. If you'd like to, contact us on Facebook. But we should always remember our biography. It is our testimony of life with God as we're growing day by day, moving from point A to point B. Now, maybe you were at point A, and you kind of blew it. And then you went from point A1 to A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, before you ever get to point B. That's okay, because it's your past. It is yours. It is recorded. God knows it. God is going to reveal it as it unfolds in heaven. But he's going to remove the stain of it from your guilty conscience to remind you of the beauty of how he can take that which was crooked and make it straight. He wants you to remember and observe all the things that he's commanded you. He wants you to remember so that you would know that God is faithful to take you through the years so that your future, when you face death or you face tribulation or hardship or agony or sorrows, you know that you'll be brought through them because your God has already brought you from point A to where you are today.
it is an ongoing process. That's what sanctification, salvation, redemption, this process of growing and learning who we are in Jesus as we develop and become what we are for what he wants us to be in the moment that we're living. Awesome, isn't it, to think that even before God created the heavens and the earth, he knew you and me, and he chose us. Following this, my mind went to the fact that God has the course of history all planned out. God's plan wasn't broadside by Satan in the garden when that evil deceiver tempted Adam and Eve to sin. Everything was already in place. For Jesus was already the Lamb of God. He was already slain before the foundation of the world. And so I began to thank our Father for making known to us the mystery of his will and for the administration of the mystery hidden in God for all these ages. From Ephesians 1, 9, 10, 3, 9, and 10. God has a plan and neither man nor the devil can thwart it. Sometimes I think you and I forget that we have and we can walk according to what God has already seen we're going to do. We can move into that place of acknowledging and knowing that he already has the future. He already knows it. The problem I think that you and I have is do we believe that? And do you? You need to sit down and think about that for a minute. Consider this carefully, very carefully. God knows tomorrow, every detail of what you're going to do tomorrow. He knows every single action you're going to take. He knows all your reactions. He knows all of your failings. He knows all of your successes that's going to happen tomorrow. Since God already knows all this stuff, doesn't it seem kind of stupid? on our part, not to get in touch with someone who knows what we're going to do and ask him what we should do so that we could protect ourselves from ourselves? I mean, I don't know about you, but if I look at my past and see what I've done, I'd rather make my future better than what my past has been in some areas. So I think if he knows my future, then maybe I ought to try to change myself by asking how he wants me to be so I won't go the way that I may be heading in the future without ever asking the one who already knows the future and has something in store for me that's better than what I would do if I hadn't spent the time to ask him what to do, where to go, what to say, what to be in the day that I live in. Because if I don't, seek him and follow his will, then I'm really kind of a blind man stumbling into the next day, trying to pretend like I know what's going to happen, when in reality, I haven't a clue what's going on. But the wonderful thing is, God does, because he's already experienced it. He's already known it. Before the foundations of the world, he already wrote it. You're on your journey heading in the right direction. At least I hope you are, because if you're not, you're heading for hell in a handbasket. And God is leaving you to your own design and your own will and your own way to choose whatever you want to do today. And he'll let you go do it, because he will not force you into serving him. He's not going to beg you to listen to him. He's not going to get on his knees and cry out to you but he is going to offer you a way that will make more sense to you when you look back on it than what you're doing today as you think you're looking forward to what you planned out for your future. God alone knows what the future is. You don't. Estate planning, death planning, burial, getting ready for the future, getting ready for 2012, getting ready for anything would be completely foolish, completely insane absolutely stupid if you don't sit down and talk to the one who knows the future. So I would say, since God says, I know the plans I have for you, plans of an expected future, plans of good, 
then maybe you should take the time today to sit down and listen to what your future has in store for you. Because God wants to lead you to that destination that he has in mind for you. He doesn't want you to walk in the dark, but he wants you to walk in the light as he is in the light. And then if you do, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, you'll have fellowship with me because that's what I want to do. I want to know what the future has in store. I want to know what I'm going to be like tomorrow and the next day. I want to see how much better I've become because I've thought about where I come from and I like what I've accomplished, but I like more about what more about the way and the direction that I'm going. Tongue twisters. But I'm excited about the future now. I'm looking forward to you know what's going to transpire as God reveals it and how He's already planned it out for me. And how I need fear nothing about tomorrow. But look forward with great anticipation if I would just sit down and ask him and talk with him and spend each morning alone with him so I know what the day will be like and he will lead me in that way that he has chosen for me today.